Okay, so everyone's always asking me, Dre, how are you able to travel and go on, you know, these, these crazy trips and things like that? So what I'm gonna do here today for you guys is show you my top seven best travel tips that I can give you guys to give you the most authentic travel experience. And, you know, most importantly, put some money back in your pocket. You put that towards gas, you know, shit's expensive. This is exactly what I do, guys. So this is coming straight from the source. I'm gonna put you guys on game, you know what I mean? So, so here we go. Number seven is gonna be travel light. Uh, every time I've been on a cool traveling journey, I wouldn't say every time, but as I, you know, became more seasoned, I learned to travel light. So that means just bringing literally a backpack. So everywhere that I've been, when I spent nine months in New Zealand, I just had a backpack. When I spent six months in Alaska, I just had a backpack. You know, when I went to Mexico, a backpack. Every single trip that I've been on, I literally just, just bring a backpack. So it just saves you a lot of time and money. Um, so, you know, you don't have to wait for your luggage dragging three luggage containers around when you're when you're in the airport so it just saves you tons of money there so that's a big thing there travel light guys travel light if you're watching this and you enjoy the content make sure to like and make sure to subscribe i, I would appreciate it you know what i mean but make sure to stick around for number one because that's going to be literally the most important the number six is live like a local and just wing it <laughs> a lot of people they, they, they have a, a trip coming up and they plan like so much for it they're spending money on all these excursions and things like that, which yeah, some of those are cool and some of those are necessary, um, but for the most part, and you know, having the coolest authentic experience in my experiences of traveling is literally just winging it and living like a local. One that comes to mind was in Cambodia. We were walking around Brumpen, which is in Cambodia, like the capital, uh, and we just ran into these, these native women of Cambodia and they literally invited us to like their cookout and we were eating a whole bunch of food and just had a, a really cool experience with the locals. The, the, the locals have the most, the coolest advice because you know, they live there. So they know cheap places to park, you know, uh, the locals can put you on to some game, honestly, so. FYI, anytime you hear me say the word we, that's because I traveled the world with one of my best friends, Dana. Wellington, New Zealand, this, this uh, girl that was living there brought us to like this, this peak that only the, lo the locals knew about. Um, so just, like I said, living like a local, because they live there, so they, they know what's going on. They do it. Saves you money because all these excursions, you'll find some of them are cool, but some of them definitely aren't necessary. And you can literally do what you just paid $500 to do, and you can do it for free if you were to know somebody. So, like I said, live like a local. That's my number six. So, number five, number five. This is a big one, too Airbnbs and hostels. So, a lot of people are aware of these. If I'm traveling through America, most likely I'm gonna stay at a hotel because hostels are not really that uh, attractive in America. I'm sure you've probably seen that movie. But when you're traveling outside of the country, man, hostels, Airbnb is amazing. You have other travelers from around the world there and you can share really cool experiences with these people. So I actually worked at a hostel uh, for like three or four months in uh, Dunedin, New Zealand. So uh, that was really cool. Met a lot of cool people, a lot of travelers from all around the world. The experience we had in Cambodia, uh, we stayed in a hostel there and it was amazing, man. We were on like some sort of island. Uh, there was like cows outside that like the locals, they had like cattle that, that, that was outside. Uh, there was a door, but there was no window. So there's literally bugs, lizards all over the room on the walls, like a net over our bed uh, that like protected us from that. In France, we stayed at a place called Cindy's house. And I believe we only spent $25 a night. See, if I would have stayed at like a Hilton or a uh, some sort of resort like that, I wouldn't have had that really cool experience. And when you're traveling outside of the country, that's what you want. You want to, so you want to, you want to change up. You know what I mean? So, like I said, most importantly, saving you money, putting that back in your pocket. So number four, number four is going to be cooking at your Airbnb slash hostel, right? Typically, when you're staying at a hotel, or some sort of resort. You don't really have a kitchen in your place, so you're constantly going and paying for food when you're going out and things like that. When you have a hostel or an Airbnb, there's always gonna be a kitchen there for the most part. Every hostel is going to have some sort of kitchen. Pretty much Air every Airbnb is gonna have a kitchen as well. So we, were, we bought food, brought it back to the hostel, and we were cooking at our Airbnb. So, you know, instead of spending $25, $30 each meal, you can literally buy, you know what I'm saying, like $80 worth of groceries and then cook it all back at your Airbnb. You know, go out every now and then, but this is gonna save you tons of money and you still get that really cool experience being in a different supermarket when you're traveling the world and stuff like that. So 
And another thing is when you are traveling, stay at a super host because a lot of these hosts, they will literally cook dinner for you. Like I've had that happen several times. So number four, when you're traveling is to cook at your Airbnb and hostel. Number three, public transportation slash rental car. So like I said, there's seven tips here. Realistically, there's like 14. Obviously when you're in New York City, you take the subway everywhere, things like that. Um, if you take a cab, you're gonna spend tons of money. So a lot of the times when you go to uh, New York or these places with uh, really good tr public transportation, you can just get a subway card and then literally you have three days. It's like, yeah, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, unlimited rides. So you, just one trip somewhere in an Uber is gonna be $30. So public transportation is, a, is an amazing way to get around uh, when you're traveling and things like that, but also renting a car. So especially if you're in America and you go on a trip with your friends and things like that, you're just able to cover a lot more space when you rent a car. Like for instance, Austin, Texas, a few years back, uh, we rented a really cool car. I wouldn't say a really cool car, but we, nah, it was cool as fuck actually. Roll that in. <laughs> we rented a car and we were able to drive to San Antonio. So we were able to cover a lot of space and see a lot of things there. You know, if you were to Uber, all that stuff adds up and it's more than the rental car. So literally you get a rental car. If you're over 25, it's a lot cheaper. If you're under 25, there's like a little fee that you pay, but it's still worth it, honestly. So uh, if you're in America, renting a car is, is really cool. But if you're traveling the country and you're in like Europe, take that public transportation. That's gonna save you tons and tons of money. Put that money back in your pocket so you can keep traveling and keep doing amazing things in life. So number two, number two is going to be to travel in season. So this is very important as well. So for instance, if you're, if you want to, sometimes when you, when you want to travel to a certain destination, you have to, like, if you really want a good deal, you have to, you can't go, you know, during the hot spots and things like that. So like when we went to Paris, we went in November. So it was a little chilly, but amazing experience and things like that. And that's kind of, you know, even like when you're going on a cruise and things like that, uh, if you go around October, November, September, that's gonna be the cheapest time to travel for the most part, because that's a, that's the time where people are staying home and things like that. People have time during the summer, so they're all traveling. That's gonna be where it's most expensive. Uh, but if you travel out of season, you're gonna save tons of money during that time as well. So I'm gonna put you guys on game here. Number one is going to be Google Flights, right? So every time that I've, I've got in a cheap flight, there's only one way I do it, and that's Google Flights. Um, a lot of people have these different websites and things like that, but realistically that all comes down to Google Flights because if you can get that deal somewhere, it's always gonna show up on Google Flights. So how this works here, I'm going on this bike ride to Boston. So let me walk you through exactly how I was able to book those flights and book the cheapest one possible, right? So you're gonna go on your phone, you're gonna type in Tampa to Boston, right? Um, and then you see right here, it says Tampa to Boston, right? So there's different dates. So, you know, with this Google Flights, how this works is you, if you have a specific date that you're trying to travel somewhere, this kind of works sporadically. So um, this is a part of just like taking a risk and winging it when it comes to this, because there's gonna be certain deals that may not fall on the day that you want, but it's just random sporadic deals and things like that. So, so I flew one way, so I went from Tampa to Boston. But when I'm looking at it, I'm not seeing the cheapest, you know, I feel like it could be a little cheaper. So what I'm gonna do is go from, instead of Tampa, I'm gonna type in Orlando. Flying out of Tampa might be a little bit, you know, a little expensive, but you can fly out of Orlando for way cheaper. And it just varies on where you're going and things like that. Like I see here in Orlando, it's a nonstop trip. Uh, but if it wasn't, you know, if this was too expensive as well, uh, what you can do is type in Fort Lauderdale, right? Um, so I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna tell you a little story. When we went to Paris, France, uh, what we did was we went on Google Flights and we typed in Fort Lauderdale to Paris, right? And how that worked was the one out of Tampa was like five, $600. So we went from Fort Lauderdale to Paris and that, the flight was like $340. So we literally saved tons of money there. And yeah, so like I said, sometimes you have to take a risk. Some people would rather pay 300 extra dollars fly out of this, but what we did, we drove our car from Tampa to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, what we did was we parked our car in like an apartment complex. <laughs> so this is part of taking a risk, right? Um, but obviously we didn't park in the nicest one. We parked in one where obviously people aren't patrolling and towing cars. So we literally parked our car there, Uber to the airport. So that's free parking as well. And it's also a really cheap flight. So we paid $340 to fly round trip from Fort Lauderdale to Paris and back. 
Uh, no layovers, no nothing there. So anywhere that you're going in the world, type in Tampa 2 there, uh, Orlando 2 there, Fort Lauderdale 2 there, Atlanta 2 there, and you'll notice that the different airports have different prices. So uh, based on where you wanna go, like I said, Google Flights is going to be your cheapest alternative, uh, but also remember to type in those different airports because that's gonna save you tons of money as well. But yeah, guys, you know, this next ride is going down. My friend Tucker is battling stage four terminal cancer. I would love everybody to just pray for him and things like that. He's a beautiful guy, beautiful family, beautiful standout man. You know, show some love, show some support. I'm doing these rides not just for me, but I, I really do this to show my peers and people around me that, bro, you can do anything. We just can't put limitations on you know our life and things that we can do because we can accomplish anything. Um, like I said, if you would have told the younger me, the 18 year old insecure, shy, this guy right here, that he would have done what he's done already by this age. Um, like I said, which isn't anything. We got one shot at this life and uh, it could be taken away at any moment. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this video can help you guys save you tons of money while you're traveling and put that money back in your pocket and have amazing authentic experience while you guys are living in this beautiful life, this thing called life here, baby. Um, but guys, that's my top seven travel tips. Make sure to follow my Instagram right here. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and um, yeah, just follow the journey, baby.